I guess to start, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, give people a little bit of context. What's your story? How'd you end up in Web3 with Unstoppable? Um, and then we'll kind of jump into it from there. Sure. So I am um, trained in computer science. So I went to Carnegie Mellon University, got my degree in computer science, and then I joined IBM. So I was at IBM for 16 years and jumped all over the place. It was a great company to be at because you can kind of chase emerging technologies. And I got exposed to blockchain a little bit just from the stuff we were doing with transparency and food chain and a lot of stuff with supply chain as well. And um, when you know, the pandemic hit. I'm like, there's got to be something else out here. 16 years, one company, there's got to be something else out there that I haven't explored yet. And so um, I was looking around and almost went to another big company like IBM. And when I was um, interviewing, I reached out to Sandy Carter because she had just come to Unstoppable. And I said, Sandy, what do you think about this company? And she said, come work with me at this startup in Web3. And I'm like, I've always wanted to do a startup, but I wasn't sure you know, if now is the right time or it was the right tech and what was Web3. Like I had to Google what was Web3 and went down the rabbit hole and really just was inspired by the vision, right? This idea that people could own their own identity and own everything about them and their assets and just start to develop wealth without having a third party middleman in between you. So, you know, I was like, I've got to do it. I've got to be on the forefront of this next level of innovation. And I've been with Unstoppable ever since. It's been about three years. Very nice. I, I think startups in this space are a little bit more exciting than normal startups, which are supposed to be exciting, but Web3 is everything's on steroids. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. And product market fit and constant pivoting. And our team is so talented and we'll come up with a new idea and we'll we'll chase it, right? We'll bring it to market and you don't have those um, kind of traditional big enterprise blockers that get in your way and bringing things to market. And so we've experimented from everything from obviously our domains and identity. We've got a whole profile where you can see everything people have on chain, their assets, their NFTs, their portfolio values. We've launched our own wallet. So now we've got an MPC wallet. And as part of that, we're buying and selling crypto, sending crypto to people, resolving their names, their domain names. And it's just, it's never ending just what the opportunities could be because we're in such a new space. To touch on that, and I want to come back to the wallets too, because that sounds really you know interesting what you guys are doing. What's a good overview of Unstoppable Domains and what's your guys' mission? What are you guys trying to accomplish? Yeah. When I joined, our mission was identity for everybody, right? Anyone on the planet should be able to own their identity. And now we've, you know, we've pivoted back around to let's tokenize domain names because we've got these traditional web2 domains, .com domain names that have been around forever and they're just stale, right? You use them to host a website, that's about it. And so now we've tokenized those and brought them back on chain so now you can send crypto to someone's .com domain name. So our, our mission now is to tokenize all domain names and get everything on chain. And really, as Sandy was talking about this morning, it's taking domains and making it about domains. It's not a Web2 domain. It's not an ICANN. It's not a DNS domain. It's not a Web3 domain. It's not tokenized. It's not on chain. It's a domain. And what are all the cool things that you can do with domain names? So what are all the cool things you can do? And compared to a traditional domain where you just resolve a website, um, a decentralized domain has a lot of other functionalities, um, and including you know sending, receiving payments, and identifying uh, yourself within a decentralized industry like this, um, and I'm sure many other things. What are some of the things you guys are working on? So you hit on a lot of the big ones. I think that um, the domain names themselves are are just a, a step. It's like, um, it's the next thing for Web3 to get traditional people on chain. Like I think Venmo did a great, great thing, right? You can send someone an email, you can scan this QR code, and now I'm going to send you some, some money. Uh, same kind of thing with our domains. If you think about our wallet functionality, and now you can send people money in regular on-ramp, you can do traditional money, or you can do crypto all through our wallet experience. So um, I... There's just so much that we're doing right now that it's hard to pinpoint one thing that's really exciting. But um, I do think that domains in general, being able to not just host a website, not just resolve your crypto wallet address, but the combination, everything, it becomes your identity either as a person or as a business. Tell me more about the wallet. You know, What are some of those functionalities? Can you, obviously you can send and receive. Can you swap in the wallet? Does it have any DeFi functionality? Do you want it to? Or what's the direction for it? So our current wallet is more of a 
a wallet for domainers. So it really is housing your domain. Uh, we have not gone beyond that yet. <laughs> we are discussing what could swaps look like. Uh, it is buy, sell crypto, trade crypto, bring crypto in, as, or not trade, but swap, no swaps yet. Um, but it's for domain. So the whole point is that you use your domain to log in, you use your domain to store within the wallet. It's supposed to be user friendly. So there's no seed phrases. You log in with the username and password. We've got two factor coming, you you know, check your email and enter a code. So it kind of reduces that friction that traditional web three wallets have for onboarding some of the normies. Cause those are the people that we're getting the people that are used to buying Web2 domains, and now they're coming over to the Web3 space, so we don't want to scare them with this, what is a wallet? <laughs> what do I do with it? it uh, let's make it easy for them. Awesome. And then do you guys have any partnerships or collaborations with other third-party wallets or exchanges? Like if I have blockhash.xyz or whatever, um, you know, it's much easier to send and receive payment and to do business and to interact with people rather than have to remember and copy and paste a, a long string of numbers and letters that we all at some point get wrong. <laughs> um, it, it seems like something that's a natural progression, I think, for the space. Like, are you guys integrated in some of those other third-party places as well? If so, where? So we have over 150 wallets that have done our resolution. So that means if you type in lisa.x, it'll resolve it to the wallet address. Some of the big names like MetaMask, not quite there yet. But a lot of the smaller wallets are, are absolutely. But it's a crowded space. I think that you're going to see some of the bigger ones start to adopt us. We've got so many different communities that we're bringing in with Unstoppable through some of the partner TLDs that we're launching. So we've got, we just announced base support. So now we're minting on base. We've got Benji, the meme coin that's there. And with those communities, there will be a desire to resolve those names within some of the bigger wallet partners. And then here at Permissionless, obviously there's a lot of other people here that are, you know, maybe great to network with or to work with or find future collaborations and partnerships. What is your guys' goal uh, being here at Permissionless and what do you want to hopefully achieve while you're here? So it, you asked about our wallet partner. We're actually using Fire Fireblocks is what we're using for our backend. And they do MPC technology. So that's pretty cool. Not a lot of wallets do that. So there's now multiple parties that hold a piece of your key, which protects it and makes it harder for someone to gain access to your wallet. So you know, continuing those relationships with people like that, that are, you know, continuing to innovate in this space and bringing them into our identities. Um, we've got other ones like Webacy to show a wallet score and the health of your wallet and show, you know, how, um, whether you can trust a wallet or not trust a wallet. We've got our new extension that just came out on the Chrome store. So we've got the it's Sherlock feature where it's got an eyeglass. And if you hover over, you haven't installed any website that you go to, if you see a domain name, you'll see an eyeglass. And if you hover over it, it'll show you their wallet balance. So you know exactly what their portfolio is worth. And I think those kind of things of adding visibility into crypto is going to be you know, getting more people excited about it. Where can people go if they want to start getting their own domains, if they want to dink around a little bit and figure out how to use it, um, and to download the wallet as well? Uh, I assume that's available now, right? Yep, it is. So unstoppabledomains.com. If you check out Unstoppable Domains on either Android or iOS, you can get our mobile app and then definitely get that Chrome extension. And then um, social media, you guys are probably everywhere there too, right? Unstoppable Web is our main handle. And then, yeah, we've got some awesome whales and community members that hashtag Unstoppable Fam, um, UD Fam, those ones. You'll see all the people that are really involved in everything we do. Awesome. Well, Lisa, thank you for taking the time and enjoy Permissionless. And um, let's, let's do it again soon. Awesome. Thanks for having me.